<clears throat> and there is Facebook. Hey everybody, Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. <clears throat> now as you come on to this video, please like and share. Okay, because whenever God releases a prophetic word, we need to get that word to as many people as possible because there are people that need to hear this word. There are people that need to hear what the Lord has to say. It's going to edify them. It's going to bless them. It's going to save some people from ending it all. Okay? So, again, when you come on with this video, please like and share. <clears throat> all right? So, I've got a prophetic word for you today. We're going to dive right in. Let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God, for being able to access you in the name of Jesus. We have access to you by faith and to this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we just give you all the glory because we can bless the Lord at all times and your praise can continually be in our mouths. And I just praise you and I thank you, Father, for Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for giving your life. So please fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill. I surrender my mind, my mouth, my tongue, my brain, my thoughts, my hands, everything to your God so that you can speak through me and breathe through me and let the prophetic word that you have for your people be released with power and with clarity and that the Spirit of God might bring convic conviction, oh God, that we might learn how to repent and change our minds, change from our way of thinking into your way of thinking so we can become everybody you've called us to be. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I posted a prophetic word earlier today, earlier this week on my page and some other pages talking about <clears throat> gun violence. So I, I, I strongly suggest you check that out. I may do a whole uh, ministry video just on gun violence, just based on that prophetic word. But uh, our country's on fire, and it's up to the saints of God to obey the voice of Christ to help turn things around. But anyway, so that's not the word here for today, but I'm just still really fired up about it. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so, our prophetic word for today is sheaves. Okay, our prophetic word for today is sheaves. So we're going to look at the scripture, then we're going to define. If you come on, please like and share. Please like and share this video, because we want to get this prophetic word out to as many people as possible. So we're going to look at the scripture, and then we're going to look at sheaves, and we're going to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. Okay? The scripture we're going to start with is Psalm 126, 5 and 6. We're going to start with the book of Psalms, okay, right near the middle of the Bible. Book of Psalms, chapter 126, and we're going to read verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> I'm going to read a couple different versions because we get different insights based on the versions that we're reading, okay? All right, we're going to read out of the King James first. He that, go uh, no, let's read verse 5 because that's 6. Verse 5 says, um, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Okay? The New American Standard Version says, those who, those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. Now let's move on to verse 6. Verse 6 out of the King James says, He that goeth forth and weeping, weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Okay, the New King uh, James Version says, He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Okay, the Berean Study Bible says, He who goes out weeping, bearing a trail of seed, will surely return with shouts of joy, carrying sheaves of grain. And the NIV, the New International Version says, those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Good afternoon. God bless you. So uh, remember, please like and share this video when you come on. <clears throat> now, what are the themes here? What, what, what are the scriptures talking about here? What, what is the idea here? Okay. Now, I really like uh, in Psalm 126, verse 5. It says, those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. What's that talking about? That's talking about your process of sowing many times is going to be tearful. I wish, that's why I do my No More Genie series. I wish that many times in our religious situations, people would tell us the truth 
So they would set expectations. Because many times what you heard in church, or if you have any kind of religious background where things like, you know, come to Jesus and everything's going to be all right. Come to Jesus and all your problems will go away. You know, take your troubles away and everything will melt away and blah, 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 blah. You heard that a lot. Okay. But I'm always concerned about what the scripture says. Because <laughs> what the scripture says is the truth. Okay. The scripture says it's breathed by the Holy Ghost into the writers. So I'm concerned about what thus saith the Lord in the scripture and what thus saith the Lord in the prophetic and rhema word. And it says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Your sowing process many times is going to be tearful. Let me give you some real life examples. If you ever graduated from any type of schooling, from high school to associate's degree to a tech degree to a four-year university, uh, university, whatever. If you graduated from any type of formal education, I guarantee you, you cried along the way. Because when you started, it was great, it was fun, you was out there, you know, buying your books and meeting people and, you know, getting your syllabus and all that in August. By the time October hit, some people have already dropped out, some people have already failed for the semester. And by the time you go all the way to the end of the finish line with graduation, you, you shed some tears, you have cried. Same thing is true <clears throat> with having a baby. Okay, by the time mom gets through with everything she has to go through to bring the baby to term, she has cried some tears during the pregnancy and she's cried some tears during the labor. And then she cries tears of joy when the baby comes out. So the point I'm trying to make here is that first point I want to make is that you need to stop expecting your sewing process not to have tears. Don't you know that's why a lot of people don't go after their dreams? That's why a lot of people won't live up to their potential because they thought it was going to be pain-free. It's not going to be pain-free, okay? You're going to sow in tears. Now, the good news is, is that you reap in joy, that at the end of all that, you're going to reap in joy. But sometimes, for example, let's say you have to sow financially. Let's say God has called you to sow uh, a financial seed, or let's say God has called you to sow sacrificially. Sometimes you've got some money saved up, and you're going on vacation, or you're going to get a new car, or you've got some plans for that money, and then you're in church, and the Spirit of God puts his finger and says, I want you to give some money. And then you take some money out from somewhere else, and the Holy Ghost said, no, I want, that, I want you to sow that money in that savings account. Well, how much? Well, I want you to sow all of it. What would you do if the Holy Ghost tell you, told you to sow all the money you have saved up? What would you do? You'd probably cry. Okay, and when you're writing that check or you're putting that cash in your hand, you're probably like, oh, Lord, because that's not what you plan to do with the money. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you've got to stop expecting your sowing not to have tears. As you come on, everybody, please like and share. Please like and share this video because we want this video to go around the world. Because when the Lord releases a prophetic word, many, many people need to hear it, okay, because it's going to bless and edify them. Okay, so stop expecting your sewing not to come with tears. If you see somebody that has a good marriage and they have the kind of relationship that you like, I promise you they suffer for that marriage. If you see somebody that has a good relationship with their child, if you see a parent that's close to their child and you say, I wish I had a close relationship with my kids like that, I guarantee you they suffered. They suffered for that, for that relationship to go. Okay, they cried some tears. But when you're sowing tears, it says you're going to reap with joy. You're going to reap with joyful shouting. That means you can expect. See, when God tells you something in the word, that means you need to believe it. You need to receive it. And you need to start saying it. You need to start saying that no matter how many tears I've shed in my sowing process, when it's time to reap, I'm going to shout for joy. And that's what gives you the energy and the strength to go through. So let's look at verse 6, Psalm 126.6, and it says, in New King James, it says, He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, br excuse me, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, once again, he who continually goes forth doing what? Weeping. Weeping. Once again, you've got to get this idea out of your mind that you're going to have a harvest that is not going to cost you some tears and some pain and some time. Because it says, He who continually goes forth weeping. Michael Jordan once said, uh, I read his first autobiography and it changed my life. It was so awesome. Michael Jordan once said that he knew other basketball players 
that were not just as talented as he, but more talented than he. And then Michael said this. He said, <clears throat> but they don't have the mental discipline to become champions. One more time. Michael Jordan says he knew other basketball players that were either just as talented as he or more talented than he, but they didn't have the mental discipline to become champions, okay? Because to have the mental discipline to become a champion in anything, you have to continually sow into it. If you want to get good at your instrument, you have to practice every day. If you want to get good at writing, you have to write every day. If you want to stay in shape, you have to exercise at least five to six days a week and let yourself rest one day. You could rest more, but you've got to go a good four, five, six days a week if you want to exercise to see any kind of results in your body. And you are not going to feel like it every day. That's the thing. That's the difference between people that win and people that don't. That's the difference between people that are just talking and people that actually read. Because it's not going to be based on how you feel. You've got to continually go for it, weeping, bearing seed for sowing, King James says, bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again. God says it's a guarantee. Doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, today's prophetic word is sheaves. Okay. What are sheaves? I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> I'm reading a, def a definition from Hunker. Simply put, a sheaf is a bundle of wheat, rye, or other cereal plant that has long stalks. These stalks are put into orderly bundles and wrapped around the middle to create sturdy parcels of grain for drying out and shipping. Traditionally, teams of workers with scythes would hand reap a field of grain. They worked clockwise from the outside edge to the middle. Sheavers used a long stalk to tie the loose stems into an upright bundle that is called a shock. A shock is made up of three to eight sheaves. They are placed in a pyramid-like pile with the cut stems forming a wide bottom. The grain heads at the top are well ventilated with this type of self-supporting A-frame. That way the sheaves are placed into a triangular shock. It makes them easy to pick up by hand or by a machine. What's all that got to do with what we're talking about today? I'll tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. The Holy Ghost told me that not only were we in a season of harvest, but that the amount of our harvest was going to be determined by our skill at handling the bundles of grain. Oh my goodness. And when the Lord told me that, that blew my mind. Okay, so first of all, the first word related to the word sheaves is don't miss your season. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have seen people come to a season, and I've missed some in my life too, and just completely miss the season. You weren't able to discern what the Lord was saying, so you didn't know what season you're in, and so you missed it. Right now, it's time for those handfuls of grain. It's time for harvest. It's harvest season, and the Lord has been telling us that all summer. Remember, if you've been paying attention to any prophet, over the summer, if you've been watching my broad broadcast, especially that last week of August, the Lord has been telling us all summer long that harvest and new stuff was coming in September, remember? So we are right smack dab in the middle of that. But what the Holy Ghost is saying now is, this is why you hear me teach about precision obedience. This is why you hear me teach about following God in detail, because there are different levels to this thing, okay? I did a teaching on 30, 60, 100 fold about why some people reap different levels of harvest, okay? That was one of my No More Genies teaching. So what the Holy Ghost is saying here, when you understand what a sheaf is, it's a bundle of wheat, rye, or other cereal plant that has long stalks. Stalks are put into orderly bundles and wrapped around the middle to create sturdy parcels of grain for drying out and shipping. Let me give you a picture and you'll understand what I mean. Have you ever tried to carry something and it was all loose, and it wasn't wrapped in anything, you picked up anything, uh, uh, pencils, uh, uh, you know, uh, separate erasers, different kinds of notebooks, um, your socks from the dryer, um, uh, staples, anything. Have you ever picked up anything and it was loose? It was hard to hold in your hand, wasn't it? 
It was hard to get your hand around it, and it limited, limited how much you could carry. But when something is put together in a sheath, it's an orderly bundle and is wrapped around the middle to create the sturdy parcels of the long grain, and it makes them easier to carry. So if I have my arms out and the, the leaves of grain are loose, I'm going to have a hard time, hard time carrying them. I can probably only carry what I can wrap my hand around. But if that grain is put in bundles, and I now I stretch my arms out, now I can fill up my arms with sheaves. Do you understand the difference? So what the Lord is saying is, is not just only that it's harvest time, but how much of that harvest you're going to be able to pull in has everything to do with how orderly you are. Oh my goodness. Can you put your harvest in orderly bundles? Do you know how to maximize the amount of grains that you can pull in, that you can carry at one time? That's going to determine how much you pull in during the season. Can you see that? So if you are just all willy-nilly, all over the place, if you are disorganized, if you don't know how to bundle things up, if you don't know how to streamline your workflow, if you don't know how to get things in order, because order, things bundled in order, it makes them easier to carry. If you know how to do that, you're going to be able to place more in your hand and on your arm, and you'll be able to pull in more, as opposed to if things are all just loose. You're not going to be able to carry as much. Do you understand? And again, when the Holy Ghost showed me that, I just, poof, that just blew my mind. But that also explains to me why different Christians get different harvests. Because if you're not organized, see, because one thing I can say about the Lord is that the Lord will always prepare you for what's coming up. That's not the difference between people. The difference between people is whether or not you listen to that preparation or not. Because the Bible says, you know that the Bible says you can look it up. The Bible says no less than 26 times there is no respect of persons with God, for there is no respect of persons with God, for there is no respect of persons with God, for God is no respect of person, for God is no respect of person. That's in the Bible over and over and over again. Whenever you see God emphasizing a point, whenever you see in the Lord repeat himself, he's trying to tell you how important that point of that principle is. So you can't listen to people who keep saying, well, God loves some and doesn't love other, or he's blessing this one, or he's blessing that one, but it's not for me, blah, blah, blah. Haven't you heard people say that in your life, that it's not for me? That's not what the scripture says. That's just what you're saying. Just like God bless, with, bless others, he'll bless you. And the Lord will always prepare you prophetically for what's coming up next. But the difference between people is who's listening. And who obeys what the Lord said. And so right now we are smack dab in a time where you need to be bringing in bundles of grain handfuls. But depending on how organized you are, that's going to completely impact how much of that harvest you can pull in. You see that? So that means, and also, if the Lord is telling you to sow during this time, now my pastor has challenged us to so uh, unto next year, next year is 2020, and he's been preaching out, out of uh, Second Chronicles 2020. So he said uh, prophetically, uh, the Lord showed him that we should sow two $20 bills or $40, two 20s to bless, to sow into, to get ready for 2020. Now he said that for the last couple of weeks. So what's going to happen is the same thing that always happens. Some people are going to hear that and sow, and some people won't. And if you sow now, this is September of 2019. If you sow now for 2020, that means there's a guaranteed harvest coming for you next year. And if you don't sow now, that means you ain't got nothing coming. You ain't got nothing coming. How hard is that to understand? Okay? Because the Lord is always talking to us prophetically. That's why the prophetic flow is so important. And so that's why the Holy Ghost gave me all this today on sheaves, because I didn't understand what he was talking about when he first showed it to me. I'm like, why do you want me to speak on sheaves? And then he showed me. I was like, oh, I get it now. So we're in a season where we're supposed to be pulling in those handfuls. And depending on how organized we are, that's going to determine how much we can pull in. 
And we're also supposed to be sowing now unto 2020. And remember that sowing is not just money. Remember that sowing is confession. <clears throat> because if you keep saying something, what you say is going to come back to you. If you keep saying something, what you say is going to come to pass. So it makes all the sense in the world to start confessing for your 2020 now because that gives you uh, four months or three months and three weeks to start sowing your words, sowing your confession, sowing the word of God over next year. Start now. Because if you start now, you're going to have three, four months worth of confession going before you into the new year. If you start sowing now, you're going to have whatever financial money you put in towards 2020. So that means you're going to have a guaranteed harvest. And if you ain't sowing nothing now, then 2020 might look kind of lean for you. That is not God's fault. <clears throat> that is not God's fault because the Lord always tells you what's going on, what to do, depending on what season you're in. You understand that? So again, that's why the prophetic is so important. So I want you to receive this word. I want you to start saying it. I want you to start asking the Spirit of God to show you how to become more organized so you can bring in more. I'm doing it. I'm certainly doing it. Ask him to show you how to become more organized, how to get your sheaves and bundles and tie them up in orderly ways so that you can begin to pull in more of your harvest. And don't sleep through this season. This is not the time to be feeling sorry for yourself. This is not the time to be lazy. This is not the time to be talking about other people. This is not the time to be focused on what other people are doing. This is not the time to be looking in the rearview mirror. You don't need to be doing any of that right now. What you need to be doing right now is asking the Spirit of God to show you how to be as organized as possible so that you can bring in during this harvest season as much as you can possibly bring in and then begin to sow so that when things are, are, are ramping up for 2020, you think about all the seed, all the word seed and all the financial seed and also all the prayers, okay? Because you know that God stores up our prayers. The Lord doesn't forget anything we say, literally. Literally everything you say, God writes it down in the book if you didn't know that. If you didn't know what judgment is going to look like, when you meet the Lord in judgment, when your life is over, he's going to open a book. And in that book is going to be every detail of your life, including all the words you spoke from the time you started speaking until you die. If you didn't know that. And God is going to judge you according to your own words. So the Lord literally never forgets anything we say. One more time. The Lord does not forget anything we say. So I want you to imagine what will happen for your 2020 if you start confessing good things over it now. You got September, October, November, and December. You got a, a lead up. You see that? All that comes from the Holy Ghost. All that comes prophetically. All that comes if you listen to an apostolic or prophetic minister, if you have a pastor, or if you have a prophet that you regularly listen to, or if you're in your own prophetic flow. Because the Lord will always get you ready for what's coming next. You see what I mean? So people that aren't reaping or harvesting right now, that's not God's fault. God told us all summer long that when September hits, remember, get your work done in the summer, get your August work done, because when September hits, going to be some new stuff. Remember that? So the Lord told us all along, and now the Lord is telling us about how to get ready for the next thing while we're in the midst of pulling sheaves of grain in now during the harvest season. Understand? All right. Well, God bless you. Amen. That was a good word. That blessed my heart. I'm encouraged by it, and I'm going to listen to it, and I'm, I'm doing, uh, again, I tell you every week that I'm not preaching or teaching or prophesying anything to you that I'm not doing myself, okay? All right. So when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, if there are more prophetic words, if there's any deliverance that needs to go forth, if there's any physical healing, or if there's any more words on finances, those four things is what I'm asking the Spirit of God when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues. Okay? That's what I'm doing now. Okay. 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 Uh, the Holy Ghost will show me about the belling. God is to, some woman named Tammy. Tammy, this word is for you. 
but it's also for those of you that can receive it as well. God is saying that some of y'all have been weak in your stomach, but some of what your ailment is is not physical. Some of what your ailment is is because you don't have enough joy in your life. It's because you don't have enough Holy Ghost in your life. So God is saying he wants to fill you up all the way to the innermost parts of the belly, to where you have a deep wellspring of joy, to where every day you have joy in your life, where your life is not without joy, but he wants it to go way down, way down in your gut. Okay, so repeat these words after me. Put both of your hands on your stomach and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, fill me with your spirit down in my gut and give me an eternal wellspring of joy. Amen and amen. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's teeth needs to be straightened out. Okay, God is saying you're going to get braces. Some of y'all have been self-conscious about your teeth. Some of y'all have been worried about your teeth. Some of y'all are afraid to smile because maybe your smile isn't what it needs to be. God is saying healing for your teeth is coming. You're going to get braces. You're going to get the dental work that you need to make your smile be a smile that you're not ashamed of. God is saying that is coming in your future really soon, so get ready for it. Mm, I received that. All right, that's it. All right, amen and amen. I am so glad, I'm so proud to come to you every week and be used of God be used of God because it's him and it's not me. And I praise God for his Holy Spirit and I praise God for the prophetic flow. All right, so that's this week's prophetic word. Uh, remember, please, to like and share this video. Uh, this will be up on YouTube uh, in about an hour. And oh, oh, I want to make an announcement. My prophetic devotional is coming out next year. I'm so excited. I'm going to be talking about it from now on until it hits in January. And then when I get uh, some, some pages, when I get some hard copies, I'll be able to show you. But I'm going to release a, release a prophetic devotional starting next year for those that want to learn more about the prophetic. So it teaches you how to look at a scripture, how to pray and meditate through it, how to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying about it. And then you can write down what the Lord is saying. You can come back and check whether or not it has come to pass. And it teaches you uh, about the different, uh, it goes through different prophetic experiences in the Bible. And it teaches you how to get more in your prophetic flow. Okay, that's finally going to be ready and it's going to drop uh, January 1st of 2020. I'm so excited. So I'm going to be talking about it a lot <laughs> between now and then. And I'm going to have a pre-order and I'm going to do a book launch, all the things that I, I normally do. But I just wanted to let my audience know that that is coming up. All right. Amen and God bless. So I am here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then this Thursday, I believe, yeah, this Thursday, the 12th, I'm doing my No More Genies uh, program, and my No More Genies program is about getting rid of the genie concept of God, okay? And the genie concept of God is where we think that following God somehow is magic, and that it's, you know, spooky, or it's about saying the magic words or whatever, but we actually get rid of that, and we go into the scripture and see what the scripture says. And right now, I'm teaching a series on preaching where Jesus actually preached, which, was, which uh, was the kingdom of God. So that's where we are right now. So I will be on this Thursday, the 12th, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. It'll be on Facebook, Periscope, and then it'll end up on YouTube as well. Okay, so that's this Thursday, the 12th, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and then I'll be on uh, back on next Sunday, the 15th, at my regular time of 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, amen. Excuse me. Uh, amen. God bless. Thank you for joining in. And uh, have a good week. Remember, it's time to pull in that harvest and pull in that harvest, that harvest with orderliness and discipline and skill because that's going to increase how much you can pull in. Okay? So have fun reaping your harvest this week and all this month and all during the season. And I will see you Thursday and then again on Sunday. God bless.